we moved over there from there over to here so that we would be able to, you know, uh, social distance and to comply to as well sure. as we could, you know, to to the uh, you know reopen Saskatchewan guidelines. And then they hand us a ticket. I know that that I was gifted to minister to the poor. Not everyone is gifted to minister to the poor. Not everyone. And I write, I don't judge Christians for not reaching out because they're just not gifted to to reach out to to people that are just like crazy lives, you know. And and, and uh, so I know that I was gifted at that time. The Lord gave me the gift of mercy, and um, and. You know, that's been part of the reason why I've been able to persevere because when you know you're called to do something, then there's no turning back. You can't back down from the government. A Prince Albert, Saskatchewan church has received a $14,000 coronavirus fine for singing without wearing masks. It's outrageous. It's un-Canadian, and we refuse to let this stand. We are helping the Full Gospel Outreach Centre fight back, and we need your help to do it. Today I'm bringing you a story about a Fight the Fines case that we've been working on for almost a month now. And then, after this is all over, I'm going to ask you to help us help a man who's doing good work to help vulnerable people that few people are willing to do, and he's paying a high cost for all of it. In early October, an inner city Prince Albert Saskatchewan church was given a five-figure COVID-19 fine by the province of Saskatchewan for singing in their church without masks on. It could be one of the highest fines of this kind we've seen in Canada. Look at this. A Prince Albert Saskatchewan church was fined $14,000 after a multi-day event caused an outbreak of the novel coronavirus. A traveling evangelist spoke at the full gospel outreach for several days, according to Prince Albert Mayor Greg Dion. Remember that name. He said the event drew hundreds to the church, both from the city and further north. They crossed the line, said Dion, adding, he doesn't understand why the church wouldn't follow guidelines when, quote, every other place of worship in the city has. And while it was the province of Saskatchewan that eventually issued the fine for the church, it was that mayor, Greg Dion, and a local First Nations chief who pushed the province to issue the fine to the church. Look at this. The mayor of Prince Albert and the chief of the Peter Ballantyne Cree Nation in northern Saskatchewan say the organizers of Prince Albert church meetings that have been tied to a regional outbreak of COVID-19 should be fined by the provincial government. There's got to be strict consequences, said Mayor Greg Dion. They weren't wearing masks. The rules say they have to. So take action. People have to know that we are a strong government. Well, that was it for me. This bully mayor had a poor church fined for singing without masks on. It's absolutely unreal. So I went on a road trip to Prince Albert, Saskatchewan to see this church for myself and meet with the pastor. The mayor insisted be fined, Pastor Vernon Temple, to get the other side of the story. I met with Pastor Vernon Temple at his church in downtown Prince Albert, where he ministers to the homeless and the addicted, where he also runs a clothing bank to clothe the cold and weary, where he feeds the hungry. There are intravenous needle drop boxes just up the street from Pastor Vernon Temple's church. And as you'll see, his church is not wealthy by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, the church recently suffered a flood, and that was when the city and that vindictive mayor, Greg Dion, cracked down on Vernon Temple. Take a look at this. There's something about it when the government intervenes like this and they kind of really put the, the, uh, the screws down on you and put fear in, in, into, you know, and it's, it's, it is a serious, thing right it's a serious virus very contagious and and in some cases can be fatal so that that kind of that kind of is is a faith position of a lot of 
a lot of uh, faith people is is that they were kind of intimidated by the you know the whole propaganda all the all the media all the government uh, propaganda of of uh, fear so it's it's something that you know uh, it's, it's sad I want to learn a little bit more about your ministry here yeah. Pastor Vernon Temple um, because it appears to me that you minister to people sort of uh, the, uh, the most vulnerable. Yeah, no doubt. That's uh, um, like we we uh, we have apartments upstairs. The city pushed hard against us to close them, so we just you know figure well, you know, like it's uh, it, it just isn't worth the trouble anymore. So we close our apartments. That's what we do. So we you know fulfill that one of the part of that commission at least to you know feed the hungry and to clothe the naked and and uh, and then um, and. So we kind of given up a little bit, a little part of that in in providing shelter. But even when we're having services here, we had services for thirty two days. There's always people here that wanted that needed a place. These people are like second, third generation, coming from second, third generation dysfunctional, alcoholic, violent homes, and 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 they need they need, they're hopeless. Like they just they they can't even go back to their own reserve in some cases. They they can't go back to their families because because you know, uh, it's just too much chaos, right? Again, these marginalized people, they were receiving and may, in a process of turn, changing their lives and, and surrendering their lives to God, and then all of a sudden it just stops. I just want to go back for a second here um, and, and come back to the point that you're making because the government did force you to shut down. To shut down. Yeah. Um, and I think you and I would both agree that church is essential. Yeah, <laughs> it's an essential yeah, service. Yeah. Um, tell me about what services looked like during the pandemic. Did you have hand sanitizer, offer masks? How many people were here? Uh, in this in this area, we had I think maybe up to about maybe a hundred people. Uh, we provided um, a sign in sheet. Um, I think. I think most people signed in at least to begin with. Sure. You know, once they, I guess maybe once they figured they signed in, then they're recorded as being, you know, like if there's ever an issue, uh, then they would they were on the list, right? So they didn't have to sign in every day or they just forgot. I'm not sure what happened there. And we provided masks and we provided hand sanitizer. Um, the problem with, with, you know, social distancing in the church is that, is that, you know, a group of people come in and, you're assuming they drove together, that they're family, uh, that they're kind of a what they call a pod or whatever, and so they want to sit together. So you can't just put chairs, you know, uh, you know, like six feet apart, because because they're actually people people are allowed to sit together, families are allowed to sit together. So um, so we did we did. Um, it's it's very difficult to monitor those, but the street people are probably the the hardest to manage um you know like if you're used to not washing your hands more than once a day or once a week or something you know i don't know what the situation is then then hand sanitizer like you know like you know like they, they just you know so how do you enforce that right so um and even social distancing we put chairs out kind of but you know you want to include them, eh? You don't want to put okay. All the street people have to sit in the back here, you know. And sorry, but you know, just government regulation, you know. And uh, you know, like that. How do you how do you do that? You, you know, know, that's how, a really great point. You want to you, people show you love them and care for them, and you're 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 really there to help them, and you're saying, well, you know, but you got to sit over there. Right. You're trying to integrate the homeless population into yeah. your regular yeah. congregation. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you mentioned that you already had some friction with the city because of, of the past. Uh, in the Ministry past, the, yeah, the because apartments. because of the apartments upstairs where you're trying to, you know, meet your Christian obligation to, yeah. you know, put a roof over the head of the homeless, yeah. um, and so even though you were holding uh, church here and and doing your best to social distance and follow the rules, um, you still came under fire from Prince Albert Mayor Greg Dion and the chief of Peter Ballantyne First Nation, Peter Beatty. They called on the province to fine you. Yeah, apparently. Um, and this is after the outbreak, of course, right? And, and, and um, uh, I think 
and maybe at the time there might have been maybe 20 cases, 20 known cases. And uh, but Greg Dion, like he would just jump on any opportunity to to come against us and to to speak against us and to to uh, anything that he could possibly use to to. They they wanted two years ago. They wanted to uh, uh, take our building, close it down, take our building, and demolish it for a parking lot. Like so, that's you know like. No, no consideration for what we're doing, what we're trying to do, trying to reach out to, to homeless, har marginalized people. How did uh, the outbreak sort of come to light? I know it was initially well, just a handful of cases that were attributed. That I know of that was she worked at the casino. Uh, she got tested positive, and so that was the first one that I know of. Oh, that, so the casino. Yeah. It, she so the, at the casino. So maybe it came from the casino. Eh? Is the casino still open? Yeah. Uh, so the, the church is closed, but the casino is yeah. open. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, but then, you know, like they, again, it's just, you know, to where it came from. Yeah, like, it, you know, it came from somewhere, right? Sure. came from China. China. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's blame the Chinese again, right? We should be. That's, what, you know, and if we're really all in, in this all together, then that's probably, you know, like, should, should there even be tickets? You know, like. Let's let's try to get some money out of China, perhaps. <laughs> you know, like I'm <laughs> listening. <Pastor. laughs> you know, maybe that's where we should be trying to get the money from. But no, then then but then, you know, we're afraid to challenge China, right? And we're afraid to stand up against them. And yeah. it's easier to challenge Christians who are well, called to turn the other cheek. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> How did the fines come down? How did you find out that you were levied some fines? You had an e, uh, evangelist, Ian Lavely. He received a $2,800 fine plus a victim surcharge. And the, your ministry received what I think so far is the largest fine issued in the country for the coronavirus um, and breaking the regulations of a municipality is $14,000. Plus a victim surcharge no, or ten. with ten yeah. plus the victims. Yeah. So yeah, I was just I was contacted by Peter Ross from the um, you know from the health authority. Uh, said he wanted to talk to me, and I, I wouldn't even if he said I've got something for you. I I, um, I think he did say that anyways, but he didn't tell me he was going to you know give me a fine. Uh, but yeah, two weeks ago uh, he contacted me, and uh, so I met him at my place of uh, quarantining and uh, out at the farm and and he uh, um, basically gave me the ticket. Now you're not a wealthy congregation but your congregants immediately started fundraising to help you pay yeah. that fine. Now at Rebel News we don't want you to pay that fine. We want you to keep that money, continue to do the good work that you do for uh, vulnerable populations, people on reserve, Métis communities. So are you going to get us off this? this We're going to do our best to get you off it because we hired you a really great lawyer and he's going to fight that fine for you. And our people at home, our viewers, our rebel supporters are going to fundraise to pay your lawyer. And, awesome. and uh, so nothing out of pocket. The lawyer doesn't work for us. He works for you. We're going to pay the bills. Um, and that's what we're going to do because uh, we believe that church is essential. And I'm very disappointed that the city of Prince Albert put a stop to the work that you were doing when people needed it the most. Yeah, you know, like, uh, I re really appreciate that. Really awesome. Uh, wonderful. Um, uh, so we've been, we have been doing fundraising. Uh, not really, because people have just voluntarily given, you know, the money's gone into our savings account. Uh, we're going to keep the money there for the fine. Yeah. Well, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. <laughs> but, you know, it's comforting to know that the money's still there, right? Like, and people have been so good, it's been so gracious and loving and caring about this and been sending us, you know, like, like I think we're at eleven, twelve thousand $12,000 right now. And, and uh, you know, and I so appreciate that. And it's going to stay in the account until this is done, eh? Like, uh, and uh, but you know, by all means, you know, uh, you know, we we um, will keep receiving, uh, we'll keep receiving gifts for and specifically for that for the for the fine, uh, just and and um, maybe any other costs incurred. But yeah, uh, it's been 
it's been uh, pretty amazing to see the support and the help. And it's really amazing that um, that you got a lawyer for us, and, and uh, it's really, really wonderful. Thank you, and and uh, thank you to your supporters. We don't want to be uncooperative. We don't want to, well. We don't want to be uncooperative in the least. But the thing is, is that as a church, we're trying to exercise our rights and freedoms, constitutional rights and freedoms, and and as, and the commission, which which a lot of people actually ignore or they don't even know about but the commission of jesus to preach the gospel to the poor you know that was yeah. uh yeah that's that's a command right that's uh, that's a uh, that's a commission to preach the gospel to the poor i know that that i was gifted to minister to the poor not everyone is gifted to minister to the poor not everyone and i write i don't judge christians for not reaching out because they're just not gifted to to reach out to to people that are just like crazy lives you know and and uh so i know that i was gifted at that time the lord gave me the gift of mercy and um and you know that's been part of the reason why i've been able to persevere because when you know you're called to do something then there's no turning back you can't back down from the government you can't back down from their pushing hard against you you just have to keep going on you know that god is on your side it's, that's part of faith right i don't think this is going to happen because we've been pretty successful fighting these fines um for other people if the government doesn't drop this fine against you what does fourteen thousand dollars taken out of your ministry mean for the people that you're trying to help? Now, what we could do with that money? Right, that's my question. Uh, what would you like, do with that money if you were like able to? We keep would. It? Uh, we do some renovations in the church. We have to. We'll go next door there, and we had we had a flood there a year and a half ago, and we were underinsured, which you know, like people understand that, right? They under they you know you have a three million dollar building, and you you. You insure it for about as much as you can afford and hope for the best. But when something happens, then you're underinsured. And so it paid paid our bill of, of tearing out this, the stuff. And, um, and but there was there was no money left over to do the renovations to re, to rebuild it. Here's another issue, right? Like we, we were packed in here and then Ian says, we got to move next door. We, we have to, we need the space, right? So, and then, so we, we, we got, probably got the ticket because of this, but then we moved next door where there's lots of room. There's piles of space, eh? So, um, and, but it's a little rough in there. We moved over there, from there over to here so that we would be able to, you know, uh, social distance and to comply to, as well sure. as we could, you know, to, to the, uh, you know, reopen Saskatchewan guidelines. And then they hand us a ticket a week later or, or you know, 10 wow. days later, actually, wow. you know, or actually it's about two weeks after, but we were here for, uh, Brad, do you remember how long we were in here? Like at least a week, eh? Yeah, at least a week we were in here. And we were trying to move sooner, but the problem is, is that like, um, uh, we weren't sure what to do with the floor. It's a construction zone. <laughs> yeah, basically, you know, but it doesn't, you know, I mean, it's okay. You know, it's like sure. tent meeting, right? Like if yeah. you've ever been, ever been to a tent meeting, sure. you know, they have, you know, grass is your floor, right? So then, yeah, so we move over here and then they, after we've moved over here and actually uh, complying to the, to the regulations a lot better here than we were over there, they still give us a ticket. So there's, you know, not saying, okay, well, we can see what you've done. You know, you move from there to here. Uh, you know, you're, you're like, that's a major effort, right? Sure. That's a major effort on our part to, to, uh, to comply, you know, to do our best to comply. I didn't even realize that they ticketed you after you moved over here. Yeah. Like it, that's almost insane. Like that's, that's vin vindictive. I think that's vindictive. That's, yeah. you know, and so here, like, again, the mayor makes, you know, he makes decisions off the cuff. Uh, he doesn't understand, you know, like really doesn't understand the people we're trying to minister to. And if he doesn't understand the people we're trying to minister to, then he doesn't understand us, right? Like he doesn't, he's, you know, and, and uh, you know, and that has never really made any attempt to bridge that gap mm -hmm. of ignorance, eh? Sure. Not that I'm calling him ignorant, but, you know, uh, ignorance is bliss for some people. And, and yeah. like, 
he he should have he should have been hey he got, and he's got my phone number the mayor has my phone number and he should have been phoning hey Vern, we got to talk you know but never never is always always a political agenda and he used to be a nice guy but then he became a politician <laughs> you can quote that does that look to you like a church that has fourteen thousand dollars just to throw around to pay a bully's fine imagine what taking fourteen thousand dollars out of the budget of a church that feeds the homeless really means in a practical sense to the people they help every day i want to tell you i reached out to the mayor greg dion that mayor of prince albert with some questions about why he was so heavy-handed with the full gospel outreach center because the more I dig, the more I find out there's absolutely more to this story, and I'll share that with you in a subsequent update. But here's what I asked the mayor to clarify. Were any attempts made by the city to bring the church into compliance before calling on the province to levy fines? Were any warnings issued, inspections done, advice given, supplies provided? Question two, Pastor Temple says that contact tracing suggests the outbreak spread to his church through a congregant who caught it on the job at the local casino. Did the casino face any strict consequences, investigations, fines, or closures? If not, why not? What replacement resources are being provided by the city of Prince Albert to the vulnerable populations that usually seek food and clothing from the now closed full gospel outreach center well i'm sure that none of you are surprised to learn that this authoritarian mayor with what i have now learned seems to be a real vendetta against pastor Vern, never ever got back to me i sent that email three weeks ago at least now, our regular viewers know that religious freedom and the rights of Christians in the public square to practice their faith completely unmolested by the government is something that I am deeply passionate about. And I've raised money to help Christians return to their indigenous homeland on the biblical Nineveh plain after facing an ISIS genocide in Kurdistan. I've walked in the bombed out churches in the Iraqi town of Batnaya, a town that sat behind the ISIS front lines. So what I'm saying here is I'm not scared of a small town bully mayor with a mean on for a pastor who helps inconvenient people on the fringes of society so that the city of Prince Albert doesn't have to. As I mentioned in our interview, I promised Pastor Vern that I would find him a lawyer, and I did just that. Sarah Miller from JSS Barristers is a lawyer whom I think might feel as deeply passionate about religious freedom as I do. She's already had some success fighting for Christians in the public square. She was the lawyer who helped street preacher Archer Polowski beat his fine in Calgary. Archer was given a social distancing fine for feeding the homeless on a bitterly cold Alberta winter day. Rebel News stepped in and we connected Sarah and Arter and Sarah helped Arter fight that fine. And now she's going to be the lawyer to help Pastor Vern beat this fine too. I spoke with Sarah a couple days ago from her office in Calgary about how she plans to do just that here. Sarah, thanks for taking on the case of Pastor Vernon Temple. Why did you take on this case? We had a little bit of trouble finding a lawyer who would. You're based in Calgary, but you're still helping Vernon Temple in Prince Albert. Yeah, absolutely. So when um, I was first contacted by Rebel News and as part of the whole Fight the Fines program, I've been helping a number of, of pastors and street churches and for whatever reason, uh, Saskatchewan, Alberta, anywhere we seem to be, uh, the police and the professionals who are are prosecuting and charging these people really target churches. And um, they're doing great work. They're helping the poor. Uh, we've seen over and over in the media how the rules of COVID and the laws on lockdowns target and affect 
poor people, marginalized people the worst. Um, and so I decided to take on this file because that, uh, you know, offends something deep in my core. Um, I think it offends most people's understanding of how law and justice should work. Um, $14,000 for a church uh, that is working with the poor in a, you know, a relatively small community in Saskatchewan is just frankly obscene. Um, and so that's why I decided to take it on. You know, I agree with you. I've been to see the bombed out churches in northern Iraq. So I've, I've seen churches that are in places where they are doing the absolute most with the least amount of resources. And that's what I saw when I visited Pastor Vernon's church. Now, without giving away too much of what you plan to do, because, I mean, you don't work for us. You work for Pastor Vernon and the Full Gospel Outreach Center. What is the vague plan of attack here? Yeah, absolutely. So part of what we've been doing on on a number of these church offenses is first looking at the facts. What you know happened around the time of the circumstances, the alleged circumstances, and and does that really fit what these these uh, new laws are supposed to be doing and providing for the public? Um, so just doing a review of the facts and seeing if there's any way on those facts that you know this doesn't fit what the purpose of the law is. Um, and then also considering charter rights, uh, it's one of our fundamental freedoms in the charter to have a right to religion and a right to practice your religion. And so that is one of the, the big questions that come up in all of these, uh, these defenses is at right to assembly, right to association, right to freedom of religion, right to freedom of speech. So uh, we're going to kind of attack it as a two prong. Uh, I think I've mentioned before in the show that we, we look at the facts, see if there's you know, a factual analysis, that's kind of our, our first step. And on the second side, our two-pronged approach is addressing the charter issues. Well, Sarah, I want to thank you so much for agreeing to take on this case. It's a it's a big one. It's egregious. $14,000 is a lot to ask of any church, but especially this church that is doing such good work um, feeding the the hungry and clothing the the poor and the cold in downtown Prince Albert. Um, it's just it, egregious to see the amount that they were fined. And I think that people fighting for their own religious freedom have a good friend with you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Sheila. Now, here's where you can help me help Pastor Vern continue to help the homeless, the addicted, the marginalized, and the poor in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Fighting this enormous fine and fighting for religious freedom in Saskatchewan is going to cost a lot of money in legal fees. But Sarah Miller is one of the best and she's been successful so far and I think she's absolutely the right person for the job. And we are already winning these cases with your help and your donations at fightthefines.com. If you go to that special website, fightthefines.com. You can see all of our previous cases and our current victories that are already starting to trickle in. There's Walter Matheson, the man who is fined for eating a muffin in a Tim Hortons parking lot. Tamara Ugolini, she's now a rebel news reporter, but at the time she was just a lady wanting to walk on her local beach. And the aforementioned street preacher, Arthur Polosky. These are all Fight the Fines cases that we won with your help and your donations. And maybe you don't care about religious freedom, and you know what? That's fine too. But maybe you care that $14,000 is an atrocious fine for anybody to be given for singing without a mask on. And maybe you care about people who find it their calling to help those of us with nothing, because that's Pastor Vern. Please go to fightthefines.com to help us help Vernon Temple today. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunreed. Pastor Vernon Temple's Full Gospel Outreach Center was given a $14,000 fine for singing without masks on. It's outrageous, it's un-Canadian, and we're going to fight it every step of the way to help us Help Pastor Vernon, who ministers to the poor, the addicted, and the homeless. Please go to fightthefines.com.